Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Meta Roundup for patch 5.0. Now, this is going to be the last time, hopefully, that the Meta Roundup takes this format. I've decided to change the format for the Meta Roundup for future iterations. I will be talking more about that later on in the video, and it actually requires your help. You... So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get into the format for future meta roundups, let's talk about this abyss. Compared to previous abysses, it's a lot easier, but it does hit still have its fair share of, of limitations, I guess. Mostly in Chamber 1, the veteran Fatui skirmisher, which is basically the local legend ver version of the Fatui skirmisher. That's what the vet veteran means. Gets his pyro shield very quickly. It's a lot harder to prevent it from shielding up with stagger than the normal Fatui skirmishers. And, and then on top of that, it's a lot tankier than a normal skirmisher, which means that while well, you're not necessarily going to need Hydro to break the shield, it's going to be a lot more useful than it would if this were just a normal skirmisher. It's still possible to clear without Hydro, but it's a lot harder. Same thing for the Proto Gunner. It is also the local legend version. It also shields up early, although it shields up a little bit later than the Skirmisher in my in my experience. It still does shield pretty early, and without Pyro, the shield is very hard to, to, to get through. What that means is that in order to get a good clear on Chamber 1, you're heavily incentivized to have both Hydro and Pyro on your team, or at the very least, Hydro and an animal unit that can swirl off the Cryo Shield from the Pyro Shield, or absorb Pyro to hit the hit the Cryo Shield. But the point is, you need to have a way to apply Hydro and, and a way to apply Pyro for the first half of 12-1 to be a comfortable clear, which very heavily limits the teams that are going to feel good to play on the first half in this abyss. I'd say that as a general rule, Chamber 1 is probably the hardest of the three chambers. Not that it's all that hard if you have the right elements, but really just that the other chambers are not particularly difficult. You'll be able to notice a pretty big jump in difficulty from what we had like a year or two years ago, where just having Jade Bloom Terror Shroom into Magu Kenki would have been what you'd expect out of a chamber. Now you have three shrooms before the Jade Bloom and a Black Serpent Knight Wind Cutter before the Kenki. But even then, compared to the previous Abyss, this is really not too much of a problem. You're generally better off focusing on getting a team that is well suited for Chamber 1, and you'll probably be good enough for the rest. The Gluttonous Yumkasaur Mountain King deals a lot of damage to itself if you apply Pyro to the little balls that it summons. And so even though it's a very tanky enemy, because you're already incentivized to use Pyro for this, then you can also use Pyro against him and effectively reduce his HP by a lot. Outside of that, there's also another thing that makes this abyss a lot easier for a lot of teams, and it's the current blessing. The current blessing is actually really strong. After the active character uses a skill, normal attack and skill damage is increased by 40%. For characters in Night Soul's blessing, it's 80% instead. This blessing, especially on Kanish and Mulani, is insane. On other characters that use skill or normal attacks to do damage, it's also pretty good. This abyss, I think Mulani really shines because Mulani is a hydro character, so you can deal with this shield pretty easily, that wants to vape, so you're playing her with a pyro character that can deal with this pretty easily, and the blessing is really good for her. So Mulani in this abyss is pretty good. Kanich, unfortunately, doesn't have as many teams that run both Pyro and Hydro. So on the first side, it's a little bit more scuffed. And then on top of that, both the Chain Bloom Terror Shroom and the Yumkasaur have 70% Dendro resistance. So it's going to be a lot less damage. Uh, however, he's still quite good on the second side. This abyss truly is... As long as you have teams that can deal with the elemental checks properly, it feels a lot more comfortable than the than the last of this. Let us quickly talk about archetypes that are particularly good or bad in this abyss. I think the first one to mention is Nilo. Nilo doesn't have a great matchup against cryo shields at all. So the first half is already really rough, and then on top of that, chambers two and three have pretty tanky bosses with a lot of dendro resistance. So not great uh, on the first half, and then on the second half it's doable but you have relatively high single target dps checks which nilo is definitely not the best at so it can be fine but it's 
definitely not a good abyss for Nilo. Other characters that are like particularly good or bad in this abyss. I mean, as a general rule, any character that both doesn't have the best teams in terms of running both Pyro and Hydro, so you can't really play them on the first side, but also require characters that you would want to use on the first side. So for example, if the team I'm using for, for the first side is Sucrose National, it's gonna hurt the ability for a character like, I guess, Kanich himself on the second side, if I'm using Ben on the first side and Chang Ling, although Chang Ling's not necessary for his teams. Kanish's available team options are not quite as good. Navia also doesn't have as great of options. Although you could still use Navia on the first half. I do think that like when it comes to the second side, pretty much anything other than Moto Hydro because of the Phantasm, uh, pretty much anything just works well. You're incentivized towards teams that have good single target. Unfortunately, well, or I guess fortunately, because this Abyss compared to previous Abysses is such, so much easier, it feels as though I don't have as much to say when it comes to which teams do particularly well or, or, or poorly. So I think I'll just right now get into an actual clear showcase. All right. On the first chamber, the enemy in the first wave will spawn in front of you. The one in the back is a Kairagis, and then you have two Nobushis on either side. All three of these enemies are enemies that stick towards you pretty quickly. So you don't have to put too much thought into grouping them. I usually just run towards one of them and start my rotation. But once you've killed them, on this side, the two veteran skirmishers are going to spawn. Once the pyro has shielded up, if you get close to it, he's going to backstep. And so ideally, you're going to want to go close to him so that he backsteps towards the cryo one and you keep them grouped up somewhat and then you try to kill them together so let's do just that unfortunately he was a little tough but it's not the end of the world because after the um after the Krog Gunner shields up, he's gonna start moving towards you. This wasn't perfect grouping, but it'll be good enough. not much to say about the second half the enemies spawn one at, a, one at a time so you just kill them one at a time and they don't even spawn that far away from each other for the second one you'll have the three mushrooms that spawn in front of you and once you kill them the jade bloom territory will spawn in the middle um, out of these three mushrooms the dendro one flies up and if you let him fly up he becomes a lot more annoying to hit so you're generally better off targeting him first but yeah so start I guess I want to start with that. Anyways, we should be fine. Now that I'm aware that my builds are a little scuffed,
Missed the vape and the crit. That's unfortunate. I don't want to restart just because I got the builds wrong. It'll be good enough. It's fine. Um, on the second half, the wind cutter, I think it's called, spawns in the north of the chamber, just in front of you. Uh, and once you kill it, the Magu Genki spawns. Genki. It's something that I've said a few times already, but if you are away from his melee range as he decides which attack to do, he's a lot less likely to move. You might have, you might have noticed that I was backstepping and like I, I stopped hitting him a few times. If you do that at the right moment, which is when he finishes his previous attack, in the time between he finishes his previous attack and decides his next one, he doesn't move. And at the end there, he did try to backstep, but he got blocked by Zhongli's pillar, which was 100% intentional and not just a lucky coincidence. All right, finally, you have the Yunkasaur. So again, right, my, my, my rotation is getting fucked because I have to I have to get my energy on Baiju and it's fucking the timing over really, really badly, which is incredibly annoying. So when it comes to the Yunkasaur, as long as you're applying Pyro to the little thingies that he launches, he's a lot less tanky. He starts with the attack that he's supposed to do after chomping on, on his three little balls. So he does the, the three hit big damage Pyro attack. Unless you're playing an HP Scaler, if you get hit by the third hit, you're probably just insta-dead. It does a lot of damage. So try to either dodge it or right frame it. After that, he does stationary attacks until he spawns his balls, then he's going to try to chomp them. If he successfully chomps them without you applying pyro to them, he'll do the three hit attack again. Otherwise, he'll just take damage. And then finally, he'll move into an attack pattern where he spins around and moves forward to the edge of the abyss. And then he's going to do the same attack pattern to go back to the middle. That spin can easily knock you away, but it doesn't really do too much damage. Finally, at the end, you just have a normal PMA. Everyone's favorite boss that doesn't have any bugs. As usual for the PMA, keep in mind that its hitbox is really janky and a lot of a lot of the time abilities can miss or have weird effects. Once it starts splitting, if you get the crab, that's generally the worst one, and the Dorito, the triangle one, 
is generally the best one. But because it's on the second half, not the first half, it's a bit more annoying to reset for good RNG. But yeah, overall, mechanically, because there's so many single enemy waves in this abyss, there's really not that much strategy in terms of grouping and, and AI manipulating, other than trying to make the Pyroslinger backstep towards the Cryo Gunner and trying to prevent the winged Dendro Shroom from flying upwards. And I guess to some extent, edging the Magu Kenki to prevent him from going backwards. There's really not much in terms of, of AI manipulation. So it's a really straightforward abyss. But yeah, that pretty much does it for the meta roundup for this abyss. However, like I said at the start of the video, I want to change the format for future meta roundups. So let me let me explain to you guys what I mean by that. So far, the meta roundup has basically just been me yapping about different team archetypes based on the abyss. And while I do think that is useful, it's also not incredibly thorough. There's a lot of characters I don't have. There's characters I don't end up testing in every abyss. And so because of that, I've decided decided to open up Abyss Run submissions in my Discord for people to send their Abyss Clears. And the way that I've decided to set it up is to try to open up Abyss Run submissions for people, whether they're good at speedrunning or not, because I think that it's important to know how people of different skill levels and investment levels end up performing in a given abyss with, with, with a bunch of different teams. And so, well, I, I'm gonna start it for this abyss. I'll do a trial run where it's not gonna be the meta roundup by itself. It's gonna be a separate video from the meta roundup, but starting in 5.1, I'm hoping that that's going to be an important part of the meta roundup itself, where I'm going to ask you guys from the day abyss drops, which is the 16th, uh, for probably a week of submissions. You can send your submissions under technically six different categories. Really, it's it's three different categories and two different try-hard levels, I guess, but you can combine them, so three times two is six. Basically, I, 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 wanna, I wanna see run submissions from people that are low investment, people that have good builds, but no like constellations or stuff like that, and then people that want to go crazy with, with, with whale run submissions. But I also don't just want to see runs where you reset 80, 80,000 times and until you get the perfect run with amazing enemy RNG and crit RNG and everything. And so I've decided that I'm going to separate them in like try hard and casual or for each of these categories. And so I'm going to open the Discord submissions. It's going to be under the meta roundup submissions channel. If you want to submit a run, I'll walk you through the basic process. First, you just record a run, uh, cut out whatever isn't actually part of the run. So if I want to showcase a, a Mulan team, the Milani team that I was playing earlier for the first half, I just cut out footage of the second half and of any any resets I end up needing to do and just include the actual runs run itself. And then after that, show the builds. Upload that onto YouTube and send the link on the Discord channel along with a little bit more information. So the, the investment category you're choosing and the, the try hard level. Here's a few, a few, a few things to keep in mind. I'm not gonna put any actual hard requirements for, for video quality. Ideally, 720p would be would be good, but if your hardware doesn't allow for you to record in high quality, that's fine. You can still you can still submit. Don't add any music or anything like that, just in-game sounds is fine. Make sure you when you submit, use the right message format for, for the submission. Uh, if you miss something, you can just edit your message. And make sure you're uploading it on YouTube, not on another video sharing platform. Now when it comes to the category you're choosing, the basic category is just gonna be the good builds. I, I think that's the category that I think most people are going to be interested in entering. So I'll start with that one. The point of the, the good builds category is to show the performance that you can achieve with min-max builds without pulling for specific constellations or, or weapons or anything like that. There's not really build restrictions for, for the category outside of constellations and weapons. So when it comes to the constellation and weapon restrictions, for weapons in the good builds category, you can use standard five star weapons. So Aquila, Jade Wing Spear, all, all the weapons that are that are available on the on the standard banner. Ideally shouldn't use R5 of those 
But if you like only have an R2 because you've refined it already, it's not the end of the world. You can still use that. You're not allowed to use signature five star weapons because again, the point is to show the performance you can achieve with min max builds, but without signature and, and constellation weapons. When it comes to five star characters, limited characters are have to be C0. However, if you can somehow manage to adjust your character's power to a constellation they have. So for example, if you have C1 Arlequino, well, you can't remove that C1, but you could make your build worse so that your overall DPS is similar to that of a C0 Arlequino. If you want to put in the time to do that, you can still do it. Just try to make it clear in your submission format that that's what you're doing. When it comes to standard characters the the 1.0 standard characters have no limitations on constellations they can be c6 and that's fine but Tiffany and Dea do have restrictions you can't use Dea c6 in that in this category Dea up to c5 is fine but at c6 well if you're using c6 Dea like just for her e and you're not bursting that's also fine i guess but if you're playing carry c6 Dea that wouldn't fit into this category for Tiffany i decided to put the limit at c2 also try to remember that the restrictions for this they're not really that strict it's just i want to stick to the point of the category so be, be reasonable and then four star characters do not have constellation limits but you do have to mention the constellation in uh in your submission format which we'll get into at the end the whale category has pretty much no restrictions you can do what you want i'm grouping the c2 and the c6 together because i feel like there's already so much enthusiasm and interest in whale speedrunning in the speedrunning community for Genshin that they don't need more. The category is just there for my viewers that want to flex pretty much. It's 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 not really for it's not really for the meta roundup itself. And then finally, the low investment category. And the point of that category is to show the performance for an account that is not really min-max. An account from someone who maybe has watched a guide for a character, but isn't really too familiar with how the game's with min-maxing their builds. And I figured that the best way to do that is to make it so that you have to keep one of your artifacts at plus zero. So if I wanted to enter in the low investment category with my Arlequino, I just replace this for a plus zero Vlad. Flower. Try to use one that doesn't have any useful stats. So defense, EM, ER, that's whatever. Sure, that works. And you do this on all of your characters. If your builds are complete garbage, you don't need to do it. The point is really just to try to limit build quality so that you don't have insane artifacts. I don't want to put a strict limit on crit value or total useful stats or anything like that because I'd have to effectively do it for each character because different characters scale differently with different stats and so if I put a strict roll value limit then characters that scale with less different stats get an advantage because they're they usually have less good rolls to begin with because there's not as many stats that are good for them. It's not really a strict requirement just try to stay reasonable with it. We're trying to see builds that are not perfectly min-maxed. That's the point of the category. The five-star weapons are not allowed at all. That includes standard five-star weapons, because again, low investment generally means that the accounts are a little bit younger, so there's going to be less five-star options available. Five-star characters have to be C0. Standard five-stars can have constellations in the same way as the good builds category, but again, try to be reasonable with it. If your character has a constellation you can't remove, you can still adjust to it, but keep that in mind. Same thing for talents. Talents are, don't don't have any strict restrictions, but keep the point of the category in mind. Same thing for four-star weapons. So, for example, R5 Sack Jade on Nevilet is probably not reasonable for the low investment category, but something like R1 Serpent Spine is completely fine. But yeah, that's it for the investment categories. Now, for the, like, I guess gameplay or, or skill or whatever category you can either do casual or try hard casual doesn't actually mean that you're playing like a casual genshin impact player it's casual within casual abyss player there's a large portion of the genshin player base that doesn't touch abyss at all we're not pretending like we're playing like them the point isn't to play poorly on purpose the point is just to have a category that isn't dedicated to resetting until you get the perfect run so for the casual category, I'm not going to say that you're not allowed to reset at all. Like if one of your characters die or you miss an important burst because you f***ed up, you can reset like that's fine. But limit your resets as much as possible. Only reset if something goes horribly wrong. And you're not allowed to use any like sweaty speedrunning strats like booking, dragon strike, 
you know, all, all, all the sort of stuff that you don't really see outside of actual proper speedruns. But again, just be reasonable with it. And then finally, the tryhard category. There's no limits to the what you want to do with one exception there's a strat where you can spam book to slow down the timer i've seen the like 10 second or something can key clear or you just end up spamming like your book so so much that you end up gain, gaining fractions of seconds over and over and like the the kenki gets up but the timer doesn't really go down don't do that like if something is actually straight up completely game breaking like that and it's completely unenjoyable to watch try to stay away from it but outside of stuff like that booking for energy booking for for uh, swap cooldown is, is allowed you can do it if you want and if you're going to be doing crit fishing i would appreciate if you don't completely skew your build with like 5% crit rate, 400% crit damage. But other than that, you're free to do whatever. And so you can do casual or try hard for any of the three categories. Personally, the ones I'm most interested in are casual good builds and try hard low investment. I guess casual low investment as well. But I, I, I assume that try hard whale is also going to be pretty pretty fun to watch at least, even though it's not going to have too much impact on the meta roundup. But yeah, once you've chosen your category and recorded your run and uploaded it on YouTube, you can upload it unlisted. That's fine. You can post it on the Discord channel following this format. So the name of your team, the half, each of your characters with the constellation. So C0 Kanich, C6 Bennett, C6 Chain Lane, C0 Farina. The investment category, you can run tight, casual, or try hard. The time for each chamber, as well as the total time at the end. So 42 seconds, 84 seconds, 78, and then 204 total. And then the link. It's possible that for submissions for the next one, the format might change. I might end up doing Google Sheets. Uh, I'm still not entirely sure. I want to see how smoothly it goes on Discord. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So... I hope you guys are going to show interest in it. I, I hope it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out well. I hope we get enough submissions that it can actually be interesting. Keep in mind, the goal is not to get the fastest time out of anyone. Ideally, I want to have a bunch of different runs from a bunch of different teams because it's supposed to be additional material for the meta roundup. It's, it's supposed to be a way to actually have a bunch of runs that people can go through on a bunch of different teams and see, see how they perform. You can submit as many clears as you want. Don't submit like 30, please. If you've already submitted something, try not to send another submission that's like the same team as someone else in the same category. But yeah, if uh, if your run is 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 noteworthy enough, and again, right, that's not it's not necessarily because of the speed itself. There's going to be other other things. It might end up being used as background footage for the for the next meta roundup. Well, I guess in this situation, it's not going to be the meta roundup itself. But starting in 5.1, it could be used as background footage for the meta roundup. But yeah, that's going to do it. I hope I hope you guys participate. I'm excited to see how it turns out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, YouTube.